it is a loop so you're going to be seeing several files or one file depending how many match your stringing here your pattern but um, those six guys are just simply information about the current line the, the current file that is on memory right now um, as you see I just provided a, a path I gave I gave asterisk dot asterisk but there were only showing some files not not the folders for example well that is because AutoHotKey by default um, shows only files let me put name here and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna add a new parameter and the next parameter which by the way as you saw is optional um, is to tell AutoHotKey to not only show the files but also the folders for that I put a one if I put a one it will show files and folders and I run this mm -hmm. and now I'm gonna get some things that we didn't see before like recycle bin which is hidden mm -hmm. um, the, the same files that we see this is actually a folder mm, let me see this is another folder documents and settings and so on so now just because I put that one in there I will be able to see not only the files but also the folders if is if instead you put a two in there what is going to happen is that you are only going to see the folders and you will not see any files so basically that's what is going to happen now as you can see I'm using a pattern here I can actually put the beginning of a name the ending of a name like for example I can say this I want to match any file or folder in this case because I'm I put number two in there it, it will only search for folders I'm telling search for any folder that starts with CIG and it doesn't matter what is the last part of that file so we get one match as you can see this is gonna match only one file um, you can have patterns in different ways so it doesn't matter how it starts I want something that ends with WIN and basically we're getting the same thing what if if I say if it starts with WIN and then has something like any there is no file like that but basically you're getting the idea you can actually play with this you can get um, um, of course because there are now there we go so um, you can play with these patterns and you can put the, the, the asterisk and the front at the end you can put for the for the extension just for the name and so on it, dep it, it, it is up to you to do whatever you want and then the next parameter is to say zero for searching just for files one for searching for files and folders and two for just folders right now there's a third parameter which is uh, you can only set it to one or zero or two or four false and what it does is that it um, enters into folders so for example the, the folder right now C has other folders as you saw before we have document and settings we have windows and so on but even though the, this, the, the script was showing me the name of that folder it was not entering into that folder to look for my pattern that's what I'm telling it to do now if I put a one in there it will not only find in our current directory C right it will enter into all the subdirectories and keep searching in there and if the subdirectory has another subdirectory it will continue entering over and over in there so be careful with this option because it might make your 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 script take a long time searching for something if you if you're not careful if if the the directory structure is too big they will take a long time to search but basically you will see that now I'm getting some INI files that are not uh, where we uh, in C now again we can use the full path and long path to make sure uh, to know where they are that's where those guys come uh, handy so you can say full path and then you can see C this is this one is in recycle bin this one is in the BJ printer and so on so basically now you can see the the full path now what is the difference between full path and long path 
Well, <clears throat> there's another way of you um, looping through files, which is using what is called a relative um, um, URL. In our case, in here, I am saying that it should go to C and loop in there. But what if I want to say it doesn't matter where I am located, just go out one folder, go out a second folder, and then loop in there. So basically, in this case, I am giving a path that is not definite. It is not in the C drive, it is not in the D drive, it is anywhere you are at the moment. It will go out two folders and it will loop in there. So what happens with this guy is that if you have full path, the, the information that you're going to get is also relative. So as you can see, now I'm getting some, some paths in here and some information, but it is not the complete path. I do not have the look. I do not know if it is in the C drive, if it is in the D drive or something like that. I'm just getting the relative path of that file. And that, my friends, can be sh changed if you actually change full to long in this case. Now, if I run this again, I will get the complete path to that file that I just saw. Okay, so basically that is the difference between those two um, variables. And this is how looping through files uh, works out. Again, you can use this for copying files, deleting them, moving them, removing, uh, renaming them, and so on. So guys, I'm going to leave it at this. The next video is going to be the second part of this tutorial, which is um, how to loop through the contents of a specific file, which is the last um, uh, topic with the loop command. So I hope that you guys um, enjoyed this video. I hope that you were able to learn something. And we're going to be seeing each other in the next video.